how to manage your time so you can manage your growing business. A couple ground rules for this talk. Uh, number one, you, you don't have to be here, so you can get up and leave if you need to. Just feel, don't feel trapped is all I'm trying to say. Uh, don't feel trapped by the room. Uh, number, I'm, I'm real hard to offend. Uh, number two, um, you give yourself permission to not have anything required of you for this moment, right? So we're gonna do this talk. It's not gonna be that long because I'm not intelligent enough to fill up a whole hour. And um, thank you for giggling. And uh, we're gonna do this talk, and, and, but, but give yourself permission to not be, have anything required of you for like a whole 30 minutes. Like for 30 minutes, you can exist in the world without having anything required of you. I just wanna get, give you permission from me because I know that matters to you, and give yourself permission. So uh, also, these slides are on my website, adamjwalker.com forward slash WCATL, because I saw Nathan Ingram do that, and I thought that was really clever. So I stole his idea and did that. And actually, uh, some components of this talk he also talked about, because his talk was about productivity, and it was excellent. Uh, so you might see some other things reflected there, though I did have them in the slides prior to his talk, just so we're all clear. Um, all right, so a little bit about me. Oh, and I lost you on the slides. I don't know what happened. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm your host for the next 30 minutes or so. I'm a husband and father of five. I love to start my bio with that husband and father of five. And I do that in case there's like a single person in the audience that's looking at me and thinking, oh man, I really love middle-aged tired guys. So I just want you to know, like I'm a husband first. So sorry. Um, I'm also the co-founder of Sideways 8, which is a digital marketing agency. Some of you have seen some of us talk throughout the weekend which is really fun. Some team members are here, best team ever. And also the co-founder of 48 and 48. We're a nonprofit that hosts events to build 48 nonprofit websites in 48 hours. Uh, we do events here in Atlanta. We also do them in New York, Boston. We're probably going to LA shortly. We're gonna be in Dallas this year, London, somewhere else. I don't even know. If you know a nonprofit that needs a website, send them to 48and48.org, that'd be great. I also host uh, three podcasts now. Uh, one is Tech Talk Y'all. It's a tech comedy podcast because I think I'm funny. The second one is Good People, Good Marketing. It's a podcast about digital marketing for nonprofits. And the third one is yet to be released, but it's Real Pink by Susan G. Komen. And uh, Sideways Aid has created that, and I'm hosting that podcast, which is awesome. I also blog at adamjwalker.com about productivity and habit building and, I don't know, other insane things. And uh, I have a Twitter account where I tweet occasionally. So uh, if you want to follow me there, that'd be awesome. I actually just tweeted this morning about 48 and 48 and needing more help getting nonprofits signed up. So if you want to help me, you can retweet that. That would be amazing. You can just do that now and ignore everything else I say for the next 15 minutes. That'd be fine. All right, so we're going to talk about productivity. So this is my family. Um, by the way, we have five kids. I mentioned that. And this is us in China because we're insane. And uh, we went to China because it was awesome, really. So uh, I'm, I'm going to interlace uh, pictures of my kids throughout this presentation so that you'll stay entertained because I'm not sure if the presentation is good enough. So I, I, wanna, I feel like I need to butter you up with pictures of my kids. So, um, so this is us in China. And I put this for the mindset slide because one of our mindsets as a family is travel over stuff. So we don't really do the stuff thing and like the whole toys thing and all that stuff. I just don't, I don't need more stuff in my house. I got enough stuff in terms of people. So I feel good about that. Uh, so we, we, got, we went to China instead, it was great. So that's one of our mindsets. We're gonna talk about mindsets for productivity. So the first mindset that I wanna talk about is never say busy. So people look at me and they're like, okay, so you got three podcasts, you got five kids, you're married, you do all these home projects, you got two companies you're trying, like they, they kind of go through my whole bio and they first think I'm completely nuts, which is probably true. And the next thing they say is, you must be so busy. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't use that word. I don't believe in that word. I think that word is complete junk. I never use the word busy. And here's why, right? So busyness is like a goldfish. It grows to the size of the bowl that you give it, right? Like, so I don't know if you know this, but like goldfish can grow like real big. Like my father-in-law has a goldfish in his pond and I swear the thing's like this big. It's a goldfish. Like the little tiny ones that you get your kids over and over again and pretend it's the same one. Oh yeah, that's Charlie the fish. And then the next one like, oh yeah, that's Charlie too. You know, Charlie just went on vacation for a day while we went and got another Charlie. It's cool, you know? And it's like that, like they grow, your busyness will grow to the size of the bowl that you give it. And that's why you have to have very specific boundaries. There's also Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law is the adage that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. That's the definition on Wikipedia, which we all know is true because it's on the internet. Okay, 
And the last thing is, it's just, listen, busyness isn't real. Let's just, be, let's just be real honest, real talk for just a moment, okay? So how many of you, when you were in school, let's just go back a couple of years. When you were in school, you thought you were busy. Just let me, raise your hand. Man, I was super busy in middle school. Like, I would get home, and I'm like, I got so much homework. I'm so busy. I can only play outside for, like, four hours, you know? And then, like, how many of you, like, you get into, like, you're an adult relationship, like, not a kid, but, like, a real relationship, like, a real one. And then you're, like, you're busy because you got another person now. How many of you get into a real relationship? Just raise your hand. Come on. Be honest. And you're, like, I'm busy now. I got married, and I was, like, I'm I'm, now I know what it's like to be busy. I wasn't busy before. What was I doing before? I don't even know. And then you have a kid. And you're like, oh, I wasn't busy when I was married. That was, that was not it. Now I got a kid. Now I'm busy. I got all this stuff. And then you have two kids. And you're like, oh, one kid was nothing. I could, like, go to the store. I could, like, like breathe and shower and stuff, you know? And then you have, like, three. And, like, now I'm at five kids. And I look back and I'm like, I'm just not busy. Like, it's just not real. It, busyness fills the space that you give it. It's not a real thing. You don't have to be frantic. You don't have to be busy all the time. So never say busy. Don't be busy. You don't have to be busy. You can give yourself permission not to do it. Next mindset, do less stuff. How many of your daily tasks are truly impacting your business? Like, give me a number. Somebody give me a number of how many of your daily tasks, like what percentage of your daily tasks are really impacting your business? Anybody? 20%? I didn't hear 40? 40%? Anybody else? I mean, just like, let's be real. The reality is we do a ton of stuff every day, and there is a lot of stuff in our daily lives and in our business that just does not make a difference. It just doesn't. And we spend all this time. Oh, we got to do this. I got to do this. I mean, I, I, we don't have to. The 80-20 rule, it's the Pareto principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, or the law of the vital few, or the principle of factor sparsity, which sounds way cooler, by the way, states that for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. I can look back at my business, the growth of Sideways 8, and, and my role at Sideways 8 is kind of like that top funnel sales. So I'm the, I, like, people come to me like, hey, we need a website. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You need a website. Let's talk about that for five minutes, and let me, talk, let me put you with my, my buddy Brett here. See, Brett's over there. And he takes them all the rest of the way. He does all the real work. I just like, I just, you know, wave at him, like shake some hands and stuff, right? And if I, if I look at my daily tasks, in reality, very little of what I do is directly impacting that. But that's the thing. That's the thing that I do. I bring in business. And so one of the things I'm working to do is do less stuff. Because the reality is so much of what I do ends up being fluff. Some of the conversations that I do, a lot of the meetings that I take, I don't need to take them. I don't need, or they don't need to be an hour. Oh my gosh, how many of you schedule meetings and you just default to an hour? Anybody? Seriously, you all do it. Oh, we gotta have a phone call, it's an hour. Why? It doesn't need to be. You can do it for 30 minutes. So I'm trying to make my in-person meetings 45 minutes because there's no reason to do an hour. I can gain all kinds of time back. And I'm trying to make my calls 15 to 30 minutes. Because again, it doesn't need to be an hour. There's nobody setting these rules. There's all these things that we do. We don't have to do them. And the last mindset, or I think it's the last one, we'll see, is think first. Wait, how many of you, okay, listen, let's just be real. We're all in thought work, right? We all get paid to think. Is that, can we, can we agree on that? How many of you are getting paid to like dig ditches? Anybody? Probably not, okay? He's getting paid to dig ditches. We're all in thought work but we do it without thinking. Let's just be real. Like you get up on, on, in the morning and you sit down at your computer and you immediately start working. And most of you start with email, which is reactive. And it's like, okay, let's do email. Who's yelling at me? Let me fix their stuff first. Why? Because that's just what we do. But we don't stop to think. What, what impact would it make on your business and your life if you carved out, I don't know, a half a day a week, a whole half a day to just think, how do I make my business better? What's going well? What's not going well? What am I not seeing? Do you ever ask yourself that? Like, what am I not seeing? Because there's somebody out there that's about to swoop in and do something you didn't see and just knock you. That's, I mean, it's MySpace versus Facebook. MySpace is looking around like, hey, I'm king of the world. 
and Facebook sneaks right on in, and who, who has a MySpace account now? Like, nobody? Does it even exist anymore? Yeah. Right? What, what am I not seeing? Right? So you have to put time to think about that in, because somebody else is thinking about your business. Somebody else is thinking about how to get that client. Somebody else is thinking about how to win at what you're trying to do. And if you're not thinking about it, you're going to lose out. You're going to miss. Schedule time to think. Next is habits. Uh, this is me at the Forbidden City. And one of my habits is taking hat selfies because I wear hats all the time and I think it's funny. That's, all, that's the only reason. And people like them. I don't get it. Like People come up and be like, hey, I see all your hat posts. Those are great. I'm like, why? <laughs> okay. I'm glad you like my eyes and hat, but that's cool. you know. So let's talk about some habits. Number one, do creative work first. Because if you don't, you look like that in the afternoon. That's me and my youngest son on the bus. By the way, one great thing about traveling in China with a family of seven is that when you book a driver, because you just don't want to go in taxis there. So when you book a driver, you get a bus. We didn't get a car. We didn't get a van. We got a mini bus for our whole family. It was nuts. So that's me and my youngest son on our mini bus hanging out, sleeping, because we were exhausted. So do creative work first. So again, back to that idea. How many of you, you sit down, get your laptop out, first thing in the morning, email, response, 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 response. You get to about noon. Uh, I'm getting kind of hungry. Let me get some food. You get past your food, and then you eat, and then you're sleepy, and then you think, oh, man, now i got to write that blog post. How am I going to do that? I don't have any brain power left. You don't, because we, we forget that creativity is a limited resource on a daily basis. And you've got to do your creative work when you can do your creative work. Nathan talked about this, so determine. And so for you, maybe that's like super late at night when everybody else is asleep. For me, it's first thing in the morning. If I'm going to write, if I'm going to record, if I'm going to create, if I'm going to think creatively, it's got to be the first thing I do in the day. Forget all the other stuff. Email can wait. People can wait. Sometimes the kids can't wait, but you know how that goes, right? Everything else can wait. I'm going to do the creative stuff first because that's the most important contribution I can make for that day. Because there are certain things as business owners or as freelancers that only we can do. And when we only give, I don't know, 80% of ourselves to that creative task later on, or 70% of ourselves, or 50% of ourselves in the afternoon, or God forbid, four o'clock when you're just like completely checked out, it's not your best self. Don't do that. Do creative work first. Next, the two-minute rules. And by the way, I try to quote stuff like where books they came from because I didn't create this stuff. I'm not that intelligent. I just obsess about this stuff, okay? So, uh, so two-minute rules. There's two two-minute rules that sort of rule my world right now, okay? One two-minute, the first two-minute rule is create new habits that are two minutes long. So a great example is the other day, I realized, hey, I really want to write a book. But to write a book, you've got to be a writer. And to be a writer, you have to write a lot. And then I looked at my day and I'm like, but I'm not writing. That's stupid, okay? So I decided to create the habit based on this book, Atomic Habits, which by the way is amazing and you should get and read. But I decided I wanna create a habit of writing every day. So I'm gonna create the habit of writing for two minutes every day. So the, the magic thing about this is you create a habit that's only two minutes long and you say, I'm gonna do this every day for two minutes. And here's the beauty of it, number one, you can't not do something if you're only committing to do it for two minutes. Like, come on, it's two minutes. I can do anything for two minutes, okay? So if I want to write for two minutes every day, I can make myself sit down and write for two minutes every day. The other thing is, you're always going to do it for more than two minutes. Like, you're going to start writing and like, oh, I can keep going. This isn't that bad. It's just getting over that initial hurdle. So if you create habits that are two minutes long, it sort of tricks your brain and saying, okay, first of all, I don't have any excuse for not doing it because it's only two minutes. And then when you get into it, you're going to do more because it's only two minutes. It's kind of beautiful, right? I love it. So that's my new two-minute rule. It's changing my world. The next two-minute rule is real old school from David Allen from the book Getting Things Done. If it takes less than two minutes, you better do it now. When you get an email and somebody's asking you to do something and you think, I don't want to do that but it's only gonna take a minute and a half, do it. Just be done with it. Because it takes longer to put it off and remember to do it later than it does to just do it right then. Like think about it, if it's a two minute task 
And you gotta write it down somewhere in your task management software, okay? So you wrote it down. So maybe that took like 30 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever. But then later, when you look at your task management software in a week and a half, because it was some piddly task you didn't want to do anyway, then you gotta remember like, what was this about? And why am I talking, why am I looking at this task? And then you don't know what it is and you have to re-remind yourself, you have to re-up all that stuff. And it takes longer, just do it. it takes two minutes, take, just get it done. Next, create routines. So this may be the best thing I'm gonna say today. So if you've been just totally zoned out, that's cool. This next line right here, you can tweet this. This might be tweetable, I don't know. Routines are your path to consistent productivity. That's the Great Wall of China and not my family because I just, I didn't have a good picture with my, but I did take the picture, which was cool. Um, and it's a path, see, you get it, right? Come on, everybody get it? Anyway, uh, so routines are your path to consistent productivity. So routines. Deciding every morning I'm going to do this in this order for this amount of time. Every evening I'm going to do this. Because here's the thing. If you don't create, create routines, you are going to shoot yourself in the foot. Has anybody seen Seinfeld's latest Netflix show? And he talks about, like, you can't trust night guys. Has anybody seen that? It's brilliant. Like, it's just straight. And Because basically what he's talking about is, like, look, there's night guy that's like, hey, I'm going to go out. I'm going to party. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to binge watch Netflix till 3 a.m. And because it's all about me, it's all about fun, it's night guy. And then morning guy is the guy that has to pick up the pieces of night guy that wakes up, you know, hungover and needs like 15 cups of coffee to like survive the day and just get by. And so my point is you have to create a routine because you cannot trust night guy. Night guy does not have your best interest in mind. Night guy is all about like immediate fun, not about getting work done, right? You can't trust night guy. So you have to have routines that will allow you to overcome night guy, to go to bed at a decent hour, whatever that looks like for you, to get the rest that you need so you can wake up the next day and crush the day. And daily habits. So a couple daily habits that are big for me. Number one, I love this. At the start of each day, just write down three things you will do that day absolutely no matter what. Nothing fancy here. Take out a piece of paper and a pen. Write it down. What are you going to do that day that's going to make your business better? What, what are you going to complete that day that's going to move the ball forward? What three things? Only three. What three things are you going to complete that day? Next habit, clear out your email. And what I, You can do inbox zero if you want. I like inbox zero. Some people can't handle inbox zero. But the point is, you got to make sure all the communication is complete every day. Because if you're leaving stuff out there, if you're leaving people out there, they've communicated to you, you haven't communicated back, it gets weird, right? It just does. So, so set expectations around your inbox. Make sure that communications circle is complete. But as a part of that, look, set email limits, okay? Like for me, my team knows, all clients have always known, I do not check email after 5 p.m. I don't work after 5 p.m., by the way. I do not check email after 5 p.m. I do not check email on the weekends. I do not work on the weekends, period, ever, end of story, that's it. Except for maybe like a word camp. I just don't do it. I will not do it because work also is like the goldfish. It'll fill up the time that you give it. It's that, that Pareto principle. I just won't do it. And you know what happens? That means that I have to focus on the tasks that are the most important and everything else just goes by the wayside. All the stuff that I would have done that I probably didn't need to do, all of it's just gone because I only got a certain amount of time because I'm going to be at dinner with my family at 5.15 because we eat stupid early, because I go to bed stupid early, because my kids go to bed stupid early because I have to have sanity, okay? That's just, just being real. I gotta put them to bed so I have some sanity in my life, right? So set email limits, whatever those are for you. Like this idea that you have to respond to an email like 10 minutes after you get it, five minutes after you get it, no, 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 no. I check my email two or three times a day, that's it. You will hear a response from me the same day. That's all you're gonna get. It may be hours, that's all you're gonna get. Set email limits, make sure people know what they are. I even have a tagline at the bottom of my emails that says like, hey, I'm only checking this a couple times a day. You'll hear from me shortly. I'll get back to you today. Also, get everything out of your head. So this idea like, oh, I'll remember to do that tomorrow. You will not, <laughs> you won't. And then you'll, tomorrow you'll spend 15 minutes trying to remember what you were supposed to remember. Just get it out of your head, write it down, put it somewhere, have a system for it somewhere. We're gonna talk about that more in a minute. And then set your stop time and stop. This is a big one for me. Again, I set my stop time at five o'clock. If the clock hits five, I'm done. I don't care what else is going on. I don't care what's happening. Now, if there's some like major event, there's some website down or a server's down, like I'll, okay, I'll jump in, I'll help out where I can there. Like let's, let's, let's be real. But if I'm an email 
or I'm working on a personal project that can wait, or I'm working on a whatever, like it hits five o'clock, we're done. And what's great about that is it forces me to prioritize. So when I hit three o'clock in the afternoon, it's like, all right, I got two hours. What am I going to get done with that two hours? And then I know what I can get done. I know what to accomplish, right? So set a stop time. Because you people that are working like till nine o'clock, like with this unlimited stop time, it means you work unlimitedly. I don't think that's a word. It's not good. All right, tactics. By the way, this was my tactic for the bullet train going from Taiyuan back to Beijing. And our tactic was tablets. <laughs> we don't really like screens for our kids, but you gotta do something with a three-year-old when you're in China and everybody's super jet lagged. So uh, that's our tactic. So Nathan talked about this. This is a big one, uh, block scheduling. Just block it out on your calendar. If you know you have a big task to do, then go, okay, so I've got this big task. It's gonna take me an hour. When next week can I commit to doing that no matter what? Put it on the calendar. And um, for me, like I put like task, dash, and what the task is. So I know, like I got a call, I got a podcast, I got a task. And I'm gonna crush that task right then. And when it, get, when it comes time for that task, it's like an appointment with your most important client, which is you. Thank you, Nathan. Schedule it and do it. Next, if you need to, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you need something, that's the whole thing. Sorry, there's not a next. That's it. Block it on your calendar. Also, group everything. This is my group. That's, that's all I got. So that's, our, that's us really happy before we took the 12-hour flight or, or the two flights to Beijing. Real happy at, at Atlanta, uh, Hartsville International Airport. So, uh, so group everything. Group types of tasks together. So like, when are you going to do the same? If, it, if you have the same types of recurring tasks, group them all together. Also, group meeting locations. This was a huge win for me. I don't know if any of you have done this. But like, I used to do a ton of meetings and I'd just bounce all over town. It's like, I'm in Midtown, I'm in Buckhead, I'm downtown, I'm everywhere. And it would take forever to get there. And then I thought, this is stupid. So now it's like, all right, I've got a, I've got a Midtown day, I've got a Buckhead day, and then like, maybe I'll, I'll set up like a once a month you know, downtown day or something like that. And every meeting I have, I schedule in those slots. It's like, all right, so where's your office? Oh, you're in Midtown? I got to come to you? Okay, well, my next Midtown day is this Thursday. Do you have any time that day? I got these times. Oh, you don't have those times? No problem. My next Midtown day is like a, the next month. Can we? Now, obviously, if it's a client and you're trying to land a deal, okay. Like, you got to go and you got to go. I get that. I do the same thing. If it's a big client, I'll show up where, wherever you're at. We'll go there. I even went down to Orlando recently just to land. Like, listen, I'll be there. They still turn me down. I'm a little bitter. It's okay. <laughs> But, but group it all together, right? Put it all, and then calls, like put your calls together. Just, just bounce them together, back to back to back to back. And, and also, just a, a word of the wise, if you are doing a bunch of calls, I recommend at least 10 minutes in between to make some notes and like breathe. Like make notes, breathe, you know, bio breaks, coffee, more coffee. Those are good things. So calls are great, grouping everything together. And then lastly, have a system, pro, not lastly, have a system process for everything. So this is all of our backpacks. So when we did take all of our kids to China, you know, five kids, and the seven of us, uh, we only took backpacks, which people thought we were totally nuts because we're in China for a week. You can only do one backpack per person, and that's what we did. It was great. You have to have a system for everything. So I created a whole system for our backpacks, right? This is how we're going to do it. So, so you have to have a task system. What's your system for this? What's your process? How do you think about it? So for me, it's a combination of calendar, uh, Todoist. I love Todoist. Anybody else use Todoist? Todoist is a great app. Yeah, really good. Okay. Todoist, it's uh, Todoist, and... Um, well, really just those two things for me for tasks. Uh, for meetings, again, it's locations. I also set aside times for phone calls during the week. So I have specific times that I do phone calls, specific times that I do meetings, specific locations that I do meetings. Work, have a system for how you're going to get work done. When, like, like Nathan talked about, when are the times that are going to be dedicated only to projects? When are the times that are going to be dedicated only to sales? When are the times that are going to be dedicated only to marketing for yourself? Can we be honest? Like, we don't do that, right? We don't dedicate marketing time for ourselves very much. Like, let's just be real. Like, it, it gets shoved to the back. But how great would it be if we did it, right? You also need systems. You need to automate or systematize as much as you possibly can. Great example of that. I've got a podcast, Good People, Good Marketing. By the way, as a side note, podcasts are a really great tool for business lead generation. I wrote a blog post about it on Sideways8.com. If you want to check it out, you can. I told you how to do everything. I gave away my entire system. So if you want to check it out, have at it. Um, but I've got a whole system for that. So basically my role 
in the podcast process is record with the guest. And then I've got several things automated where the guests schedule themselves. And then I've also got team members that have specific tasks that they take care of along the way so that I can keep moving forward. So I've got, I've got virtual assistants looped in and automations through like Calendly and things like that. So I've got a whole process in place that just makes the podcast run really, really smoothly, really quick. So I can record, you know, five, six episodes in one day, no big deal. And then everything sort of gets taken care of on the back end. Uh, and lastly, this is a method that I honestly just totally made up. <laughs> so it may be good or maybe not. Uh, Nathan's method may be, very, may be better, but this is, we do a five, five, five method for Sideways 8. So the idea is lay out five goals each year that are gonna move your business towards your ultimate goal, okay? Five goals, so that's the criteria for the goals, right? Move your business toward the ultimate goal. Five goals each year, five goals for each month, and then five goals for each week, and then we break those down into three things you absolutely will do that week no matter what. And then if one of our team members doesn't do it, we ask why, because there's gotta be accountability. And then two pie in the sky tasks, like hey, it'd be great if I could get to this. And then you never do, because come on, right? If it's a pie, nobody gets a pie in the sky task. Everybody's got stuff going on. So I did write a blog post about that, by the way, if you wanna take a look, that explains the whole thing. We do it all in a Google Sheet, it's super simple, easy to keep up with, it's great. And that is my whole talk. I told you it would take about 30 minutes and I think I'm at about 28. So now we got some time for Q&A. Also, uh, just quick, oh, thank you. There it is. <laughs> um, couple of quick notes. Again, my slides are at adamjwalker.com forward slash WCATL. Also, you can, uh, I like this, you can check out our sense of humor at sideways8.com if you wanna see our agency website. We do have, uh, you can read the agency website in business English or sarcastic English if you prefer. Everybody prefers sarcastic English, let's just be real. Uh, also, if you know a nonprofit that needs a free website, send them to 48and48.org. Please, 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 I beg of you, tweet about it today. Please, we're doing a nonprofit drive right now and we really desperately need nonprofits to sign up. So, uh, and now it's time for some questions. So, did you have a question? I'm a nonprofit in need of help. Sign up, there you go. One more nonprofit. Here we go. All right. Yes, sir. I guess either when or what, uh, excuse me, when or what drove you to do all of this organization and really, really streamline this the way you have? <clears throat> uh, sheer necessity and, uh, and frailness of my mind. Uh, no, I mean, honestly, like it's been something I've obsessed about ever since I read David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, probably 10 years ago. And it, it's always spiraling in the back of my mind. And then as I I have a, a bad habit of adding more things to my plate, um, it becomes even more necessary, which actually is kind of great, to be honest. Like, I, I, I love adding things to my plate because it makes me focus that much more intensely on the things that only I can do in every other area, which is, which is kind of great. All right, what else we got? Are we doing mics or, yeah? Just shout it out, that's fine. So my next question right here, hello. Thank you, okay. My, my question was about your 555. Five, five. Yep. So do you guys set those as a team or do you assign them? And then I wanted to hear a little bit more about the accountability with the... Yeah, um, so we do it in a Google Sheet. Each person sets their own. And there is the assumption that if uh, yours sucks, that we can challenge you on it and tell you it sucks. Uh, and then, honestly, the accountability is... Uh, <laughs> is if you don't get it done for the week, we highlight it in bright red so that everybody knows that you didn't get it done and it's public shaming. Uh, so actually, I highlighted one of mine in red for last week to be quite honest, but then you highlight them in green if you did get it done and then you feel really good about yourself. So, but public shaming works really well, honestly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of your favorite productivity apps or tools and how do you also deal with it if you're one of those people who hypothetically uh, thrives on being busy and having a full to-do list and gets almost more anxious, relaxing? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so tools, uh, Todoist is, is a big one. Also our, our teams uh, use teamwork, uh, which is great. And then uh, Trello is, is pretty amazing as well. We use that uh, for 48 and 48 quite a bit. Um, and, and for those that thrive on business, so um, I forget if I, heard, if I heard Nathan say it or somebody else, but I. A busyness is not a badge of honor, so I think you have to be careful about identifying with busyness as success. And I think that's the problem with our culture is we identify busyness as success. So when somebody says like, hey, how are you? You say, I'm busy, and that way they think that you're successful. And in reality, I don't think that's true at all. And so, I, but I, I think for those of you that just need your stuff, you, you don't like downtime, like that's fine. You don't have to have downtime. You can have, you can have organized, you know, productive downtime, right? But it's just, it's this idea of frantic busyness that I think we have to get past, if that makes sense. Because I'm the same way, like I, 
I want to know what I'm doing. Like, I want to keep going. But I don't want to be busy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, um, so you said use teamwork and Trello. Mm -hmm. And those are good ways to do, like, the task management. What do you do about getting your processes documented and your roles and responsibilities and kind of the, the higher level of business process mapping? We're getting better at that. Uh, <laughs> um, we use, honestly, a lot of Google Docs. So we have a, we have a, <laughs> We have a defined process for creating processes that, fortunately, I did not even create. Uh, somebody else on our team created it, and it's fantastic. I think Julie might have created it, actually. Julie's right here. Uh, so you can maybe ask Julie later. I um, but, uh, but I mean, we, we have a process for creating processes, and we walk through that, and like here's how this works, so that everything is legitimately mapped out in a way that is scalable. Because if we're all honest, we want to grow our businesses. And the reality is you cannot grow your business unless you have processes in place. You just can't do it. It's, not, it's just not possible. Yeah. Okay, what else? Who, who's next? Somebody else from Mike? Yep. Hi. What do you do? How did you get so that you could do calendar blocking and like follow your calendar? Because I hate calendar blocking and everybody says calendar blocking and it makes me crazy because I'm defiant and my calendar will not tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I honestly... The best thing you can do, in my mind, is accountability. So I try to be accountable uh, both to my team and also to mentors. And so, like, so there are certain things in my life that are super important to me that I hate. One of those is getting up at 5 a.m. every day. Like, I am, like, people think, like, oh, you get up at 5 a.m. every day. You're a morning person. No, I'm not a morning person. I hate mornings. Mornings are the worst. I'll kill you. Okay? Uh, but I, yeah, there you go. But I have a mentor and friend, and I text him every single day that I get up. And if I don't get up at 5 a.m., he busts my chops. And, and because I know that's what's best for me, right? So same thing. I, I, would, I would get a mentor in a heartbeat, a friend, accountability partner, somebody like that. Yep. Hey, hey, hey Adam. I was in the session that you did, the 48 and 48, a couple of years ago when you had just kicked it off. Sure. And so I'm glad that it carried on. Um, what criteria... Are you, do the charities need to reach a certain or have oh, yeah. specific criteria? Simple, yeah. real simple criteria. So every charity for 48 and 48 is three things. Uh, 501c3, so, you know, nonprofit, 501c, it's actual you know, nonprofit. Two, uh, under $3 million revenue per year, because over $3 million, uh, their sites tend to be too complex, and they should probably just have a budget. Uh, and three, uh, let's see, oh, uh, generally non-religious, non-political. What I mean by that is, so like if there's a soup kitchen that meets out of a church basement, that's fine, uh, but we're not gonna do a website for like a place of worship because we don't wanna end up in that awkward situation where we have somebody of one religion building a website to promote a different religion, that's weird. So we're not gonna put somebody in that position. So that's, that's pretty much it. All right, who, what else we got, yep. Um, so you talked about doing the creative work first, but I've noticed when I do my creative stuff first, like I like doing it in the morning, I kind of forget I still have to actually work, if that makes sense. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you manage that, like um, doing your creative tasks first, but then being able to actually work on the stuff you do actually need to finish? I, I find it really helpful um, to, to, take, to do things that'll reset my day a little bit. So like hop up, do the, like so for me like i'll actually do a lot of creative work sometimes at like six in the morning because that's when like, my kids are still sleeping and the house is actually quiet for once and like i can like think um and so like i'll do that but then i'll, I'll have my breakfast like after that so it sort of almost like resets my day so i can sort of get started or like same thing in the afternoon like i've gotten a bunch of stuff done in the morning i've eaten lunch i'm getting to that sluggishness like go take a 10 minute walk get out in the sunshine like reset my mind a little bit and then i can come back and start doing some actual work yeah, and quick question. Um, one of the things I'm kind of running into is planning and making sure that I'm planning my time accordingly for each day, especially for each week, so I can make sure I'm getting the task accomplished. Um, two, I guess a two-part question. Um, one, is it one of those things for me, is it better to kind of plan in the morning or at night, right before you go to bed? And two, how long should you plan? Yeah, so I think, um, it, I think it depends, right? So first of all, uh, so I think... It, Every week you should plan for the next week, generally, right? So every month, like, so I, I have a mentor that said, uh, once a day, plan your perfect day. Once a week, plan your perfect week. Once a month, plan your perfect month. And every once in a while, plan your perfect lifetime. Um, he's pretty brilliant. So that's, uh, that's really what I try to adhere to. So uh, as far as time goes, I mean, so planning your week probably takes a little longer. I'd like give yourself a good hour to plan your week. But for planning like your day, planning tomorrow, I mean, a lot of times if you plan your week well, planning tomorrow is five minutes, 10 minutes, 
you know, really, really short. As far as when you should do it, for me, I do not, I, at, when five o'clock comes, I'm off, I'm done. I do not want to think about work. I am dad mode, full out. I am not, I don't want to come back to work. I'm just not going to do it. So I would never plan at night personally. Some people, they can't go to sleep unless they plan tomorrow. And that's fine. Like if that's how you're wired, you can do that. I just, for me, I'm not going to do that. If that makes sense. All right? Cool. Well, Over here, same spot. This is like the popular table for questions. Right? <laughs> it's like we're, we all kind of figured out what we wanted to ask you. Yeah. Um, quick question and like a follow-up question. So uh, five o'clock during the week, you're done. Do you work on the weekends at all? Nope. No. Okay. So when do you find time for that like intense, extreme focus to really drive the needle forward? Are you just booking that throughout the day? Yep. I try to do it on Mondays. Uh, okay, my, so goal, Monday. my goal is that, uh, so we typically will do some like team kickoff meetings early in the mornings on Mondays. And then I try to lock down from there and all Monday morning up and up until just after lunch or just at lunch is like my time to like really plan, think. Okay, kind of last thing there with that. Do you actually block that time out and your team knows not to bother you during that time? Is that how that how you've done that? Well, well, that and I just ignore them. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, just, I mean, just to be honest. Like, I mean, like, like Slack is great. Listen, Slack is awesome, but you gotta have dark times. Like, we've started doing this with our teams. Like, like you gotta have times where you know you can go dark and nobody's gonna scream at you, and in in set whatever those times happen to be. And so my team knows like I'm gonna go dark sometimes, and it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. How do you manage your creative time? Because I find myself sometimes doing my creative work and I get so caught up that like time goes by and I forget to even eat lunch sometimes. <laughs> so how do you manage that? Yeah, the worst is when you're doing that and then you go, oh, I had a call 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Man, so I actually set timers. Like, I, so I, like all day long, like, I'm like, I look at my calendar and I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I've got a podcast interview in 30 minutes. And like, even in those 30 minutes, like I'll just completely lose track of time. So I'll set a timer for 25 minutes. So when that timer goes off, I know, oh crap, I gotta actually do something now. What is it? And so I just, I'm always setting timers, like all day long. Siri loves me, you know, so, all right. Yep. What systems do you have in place for food and exercise? Uh, so what systems do I have in place for food and exercise? So um, right now I'm doing something a little bit new. My wife is a new uh, fitness coach with a program called Faster Way to Fat Loss. Not that I necessarily have fat to lose, but I have muscle to gain because I've been a stick my whole life. And so um, I'm so, so actually there's like an eating program with that uh, and then a workout program. So I try to work out. I actually train for Go Ruck Tough events. Anybody do Go Ruck events? Anybody in here? Anybody? Nobody? Nobody else is insane. Okay. Go Ruck Tough events are basically like, uh, it's like being in like Marine boot camp for 12 hours. Like you're an idiot for doing it basically. Um, so anyway, I wrote a whole blog post about it on my blog if you want to read it. But um, it, so I do train for, so you end up rucking with like 40, 50 pounds on your back for like 20 miles and stuff like that. Um, so I train for those. So I train, I, I try to train 30 minutes to an hour a day if I can, most of the time. Oh yeah, so yeah, five, five, my, me and my training buddy meet up at 5.15 a.m. There's no other time. I got like, if it doesn't happen, at, it didn't happen at 5.15 this morning, it ain't happening today. I ain't got that kind of time. Yeah. So we, you talked about a lot of your organizations. What are your, some of your favorite organizational tools that you use? Uh, I mean, really, like, a tr like I said, Trello, teamwork uh, is great. Um, Google Docs, honestly. We use Google Docs like crazy. Uh, Todoist is awesome. Um, those are the big ones for me, yeah. I can't think of any other ones that are big. I'm a big Audible listener, by the way. I'm, a, I'm trying to listen to 35 books this year. I listen to or read 35 books this year, so I'm all about audible, like listening while I'm in the car, which is great. Oh, I got the Atomic Habits one. Anybody else? Is that it? Any audible books you recommend? Yes! There's a lot of them. Uh, Atomic Habits is amazing. Uh, Never Split the Difference. If you've read that about negotiation, oh my gosh, so great. So, so good. Uh, there's like 15 others that are not immediately coming to the top of my head now. Uh, Charles Duhigg stuff is really good. Yeah, I do blog about the books that I've read. Yeah, I often blog about those. That'd be a good place to check them out uh, as well. What's that? I haven't seen those. I have to read those? Okay. Nice. I'm all about that. I love it. Plan tomorrow. I haven't read that one either. Yep. I can play Derby Night. Sure. That's tough. Um, and I think, honestly, it's going to depend on how aggressive you want to be, right? So client work is always going to beget client work, and it's, and it's going to be a slow grow, right? Uh, and, that, and that's just how it happens. Like, business is momentum. 
and business growth is momentum. And if, you, if, it's, if, it's, if you're 100% client work, it probably will grow, but it's gonna be slow. If it's 80% client work and 20% like go get them sales, it's gonna grow faster. And so you've gotta figure out like, so I don't, I don't know there's a magic number for that. It's just a question of like, what can you do? And like, and how can you like, I mean, so I would ask you the question like, how much client work can you afford to, to only do? So like, for example, if, you're compa if you say I need X amount of dollars per month, that means I've got to do client work for 70% of the time per month, then there's your number, 70%, and the other 30% is growth, 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 growth. But, but it's going to be different for every person. Does somebody else over there have a question? Does anyone? No? Yep. Sure. Go Ruck Tough, yeah, G-O-R-U-C-K Tough. It's crazy. Oh. You should do it. It's awesome. And then um, yeah. could you <laughs> explain the do less thing again? Like I kind of got it, but I didn't get it. Like, well, how do you do so the do less thing is this. Like, so, so we're marketers or we're, we're business people, and we get distracted by shiny objects a lot, <laughs> right, and in, in, in new ideas. But the reality of that is like we spend all this time on these shiny objects or new ideas that we could spend – doing something that's much more effective for our business, right? So for a great example of that is like, okay, well, I know that I need to run Google ads for my business. I've already got the targeted audience built and it's gonna affect my business. Like that's gonna directly impact my business. I know I need to do that, but I don't really wanna do that because that's not fun. So I'm gonna go over here and do something else. I wanna write a blog post or do a podcast that's fun, which is also important, but that's a slow grow model, right? That's it's gonna take more time for that to have effect than for this direct thing over here to have effect. And so we spend a lot of our time doing things that don't necessarily have the most impact for our business. And so my point is drop the stuff that you're doing that's not having a direct and effective impact on your business and pick it up later. You know, put it on pause for a month, and if, it, if you miss it, come back to it, and otherwise, don't, you know? Anybody else? All right, then I guess we're done. I'll be around. Uh